Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from, from Outer, Outer Space. Space. I hope you enjoy. Life Donors, written by Zentaps. There is no greater joy than saving a soul. Distance, times, and proper nouns translated to their approximate human equivalents. Eight rotations months ago, the home world of Hylox was quietly entered into crisis mode. A lethal plague was sweeping through the population of its colony worlds. It was an older and familiar disease, dating to pre-space travel age, that had mutated into a deadlier form. Traditional treatments were failing to adequately treat the disease, and only a heavily strained medical infrastructure kept the death toll from exploding exponentially. The media had labeled the new disease the Jinkor after a shape-shifting monster of old myths. Public disorder had been quelled, sometimes with force, and it was clear to those in power that the situation was teetering on the brink. It is on the next context that the report from the low-ranking Xenobio Department tech was brought to the upper echelons of Hylock's leadership, and a coded message was sent to a human embassy. What could amount to the saving grace for the Hylocks constituted a forbidden curse. Dr. Alexa Cutry sat reading the email on a screen, fingers scrolling through a long list of numbers. The results from the long assay had come in, and the lab techs were running analysis on the data. It was a little frustrating to have been called away, but the official-looking people who had knocked at her domicile had stressed the importance of her presence. She was currently seated in the human embassy's waiting room, orbiting around the homeworld of an alien species, the Hylox. The artificial gravity was a close match to that of the planet below, approximately 0.9 standard G, which was good for Alexa, who had lived all of her life in low-gravity planets. It was part of the reason that she had accepted the job offer to work on the planet below with a lighter gravity. That and the opportunity to work with aliens. Now, several rotations later, she still enjoyed her work and had a number of friends with her Hilux neighbors and co-workers. In addition to the fellow human co-workers at the Research Institute. Why the embassy requested her was still somewhat unclear. Given her expertise in Hilux biology, the obvious answer was that they wanted a local scientist familiar with Hilux anatomy. Specifically, a medical expert. She wondered how she ended up on that list. Maybe everyone else had just said no. The doors to the waiting room slid open, and the well-dressed woman in vaguely Asian descent walked through. Alexa turned off her screen and stood as the stranger extended a hand. Dr. Katri, I presume. I am Ambassador Suwong, said the woman, a charming smile on her face. Yes, sir. Pleased to make your acquaintance. The two women shook hands. The ambassador gestured for Katri to follow her into the hallway. Katri tucked her screen away and hurried to catch up. I hope your trip was pleasant. Ah, yes, sir. The shuttle ride was very short. Hmm. Sorry to call you on such short notice, but the Hylocks called for this meeting just yesterday. So, uh, what is my role here? Su so Wong stopped suddenly, and Katri nearly ran into her. You mean you don't know? I thought someone would have briefed you already. Catry shook her head. When she had arrived on the station, she had been shunted into the waiting room and left to her own devices, with everyone rushing off to do other duties. Occasionally, someone had popped into the room and asked for someone, and when Catry shrugged, they had run off before she could ask them a question. And, somewhat afraid to wander in a government building, she had stayed put. Well, uh, I don't know quite exactly either, Su Wong replied bluntly. She continued before Katri could respond. All I know is that the Hylocks said that they want to discuss a recent plague some of their colonies are suffering from. Some sort of request for aid. That's why I called on you. You are the closest expert on Hylocks physiology that we could reach. I'm going to be relying on you to give me some context for the translation for the science aspects. Katri nodded her head. That was what I was told. I just thought that there was more to it. Su Wong shrugged. Katri was a little alarmed at how cavalier she was being. I am nearly as in the dark as you are. Su Wong pulled up a memo on her wrist screen. It's what they call the Jinkor. 
They quarantined Jal Koob. It's gotten so bad. The two entered the meeting room. A meeting room in name only, as there were only a few chairs and no table, with a young man pushing in another chair through the doorway. Dr. Catry, this is my aide, Terence. Catry shook Terence's hand, and they exchanged polite greetings. We're expecting a party of three soon. Hurry up before they arrive. Terence nodded and dashed out the door. Where is everyone? Catry asked. Earlier, it appeared that the embassy was a bustling hive, but they had not met anyone in the corridors. A mercy fleet is on its way to help the Hilux in coordinating with the logistics and legal aspects of that alone has been distracting. Plus, sir, uh, we have a variety of civilian organizations also looking to contribute. Everyone is working overtime to handle those requests. But don't worry, we'll have a team outside to back us up here by the time the Hilux arrive. The meeting was for another two hours. In that brief window of time, Catry read all the recent news bulletins and articles on the Jin Corps. Historically, the illness had been a viral infection, which, in the late stages of illness, would cause paralysis of respiratory organs, resulting in death. Treatment and vaccines for the disease had been around for centuries, limiting its effect to impoverished regions. But this resurgence appeared to be a result of a mutated strain that was resistant to treatment and rapidly advancing to the late lethal stages in a quarter of the normal time. Catry tapped a finger against the temple in thought. Immunology was not Catry's specific field of expertise, but she knew little of Hylock's physiology to know the basic mechanism of the Hylock's immunological systems and some of the more general treatments they applied. The Jinko virus, in her mind, drew a parallel to the human disease polio, an ancient disease long since eradicated. There was no question that the disease was worrisome, but Catry figured that it was only a matter of time before the Hylox found a working treatment. The Hylox were an advanced race, with significant resources and the means to create a viable treatment. Why the Hylox would request an emergency meeting with the humans was beyond her. The same question was running unspoken through Su Wong's mind as well. In between answering Catry's questions and summarizing the procedure of intergalactic negotiations, she was also looking over previous briefings, trying to gauge what the Hilux attitudes or requests would be. Her report on the Hilux request had been processed by Central, and they were in the dark as much as her. They didn't say that in such terms, but the phrased reply, Proceed cautiously and give continual updates. Certainly gave that impression. The Hilux and Federation could be described as a distant relations. The Hilux existed in a region of space that had a number of other sentients, and the Federation became just another in a long list of them to ignore. In the grand scheme of things, there were certainly worse ways to be regarded. There existed peace, but it was all dull peace. Besides the usual trade, travel, and border negotiations, there was little other official activity between the two interstellar civilizations. Private enterprises, like that of Su Wong's company, only retained a small, fairly nominal presence in Hilux space. The arrival of Mercy Fleet would mark one of the largest interactions to date. Central's summarized position on the Hilux had remained the same since first contact. Good neighbors. Su Wong hoped that that wouldn't change today. As the time of the meeting approached, Su Wong passed Catry a screen from the briefcase Terence had brought in when he had returned from another trip. I should have done this earlier, but it slipped my mind. This is a locked screen. Protocol dictates that we use them for any official business. Go ahead and transfer any data you have right now. It is a secure connection to the internet so that you can still look things up. As I am sure that you are aware, the Hilux communicate with us via text, and you should find the texting app on there already. Catry took the screen. It was slightly heavier than hers, and its lock screen emblem was that of the embassies. Connecting the two, she transferred the file she had saved and set her own screen away. Su Wong set a screen on the table and turned to the two. As we discussed earlier, I'll be taking the lead of the discussions. I'll ask Professor Catry if I need clarification. Terence, keep in connection with the others and follow normal protocol. Despite herself, Catry felt a slight tingling of excitement. 
akin to when she was close to a breakthrough. There was an air of political intrigue beginning to permeate the air. She checked her reflection in the darkened screen and suddenly wished that she'd asked for a glass of water. Acolyte of Xenobiology, Jigzun, sat nervously in the atrium just outside the doorway to the meeting room. Besides him towered the much larger Praetor, Kegelun, who was eyeing the marine guard at the door with curiosity. Jizun understood the interest. Humans remained a rare sight in the Hylock space, and the Praetor, who had an extensive military background, seeing a human soldier in person was bound to be something of interest. The Praetor, a aide, Jirain, was closer to his own age and was busy compiling some file for the upcoming meeting. Jizun could feel his body heat rising with the pressure. Lives were at stake, and he sincerely wished someone else was in this place. But there was his team that had made the discovery, which ostensibly meant that he had earned the honor. The bigger question would be if the humans would be willing to hear them out. The guard at the door must have received a signal, because he held up a display with the words, They are ready, written in Hilux in front. The door slid open, and the three entered. There were three humans sitting at a long table, two dressed in similar uniforms, the other dressed in a different manner of uniform. Jizun hadn't studied humans enough to determine any more than that. Though he could presume the center human was the equivalent of a praetor, there were three long chairs set up for the Hilux physiology, and Jizun eased into the one facing the mismatch human. The human eyed him levelly, somewhat unnerving the reclusive scientist. Priator Kagulin spoke first, the words appearing in between the two species on a glass pane in the middle of the table, in a language readable to both sides. Thank you for agreeing to the meeting with us on such short notice. I am Priator Kagulin, representing the Hylox government. The middle human entered something into the device, and words now in a different color began to scroll across the glass. It is not a problem. I understand it is a matter of great urgency. I am Ambassador Suwong. The other four introduced themselves, the different colored text displaying their identity and names. And so the meeting began, with the Praetor giving context. I am sure that you are aware that there is a significant health crisis on several of our worlds. The Jinkor, as the media has labeled it, it is a ravaging our populations and putting severe strain on our medical institutions. The situation is worse than we have let the public know. If things don't turn around, the collapse of the Hylock civilization will be inevitable. We believe the humans can assist us. Ambassador Su Wong took a moment to remind the Hylocks of their active efforts. I assume that you are talking about more than just physical aid. The Mercy Fleet we have volunteered is on its way, and some civilian organizations are already on the ground. The charity given by the humans is greatly appreciated, but our request today is something more, uh, controversial. The fact that the creator had typed out what the computer had translated into ellipses was not lost on the Federation Ambassador, her earpiece having gone silent as the other room listened in closely. I will let Acolyte Jazun explain. Jizun almost choked. The Praetor who had faced the Visek Hive Legions and the Dark Spheres was balming in the face of the request. But then again, it was no small request. It was akin to asking the humans to sacrifice their lives. Jizun gathered his thoughts, realizing that he would have to start at the beginning. Let me start at the beginning. Kadri perked up at the word Acolyte. It was the Hilux equivalent of a scientist. Su Wong looked at her and gave her a slight nod. It was likely her turn to step up. The acolyte began to go on. Paragraphs of text began to scroll along the glass. Su Wong gave up on trying to decipher the technical jargon and instead turned to Katri. Katri felt like the translator converting the Hilux terms to human ones and then, and then converting those into simpler versions for the other two to understand. The Acolyte and his team had been running tests with the Jinkor virus with various alien cell cultures. 
The purpose of this common test was to confirm that there was no compatibility that would lead to a cross-species infection. Since diseases evolved to target specific organisms, cross-species infections were exceedingly rare. But the mere existence of that chance demanded such tests. In every case, mixing infected Hylox cells with an alien cells resulted in no sign of cross-infection occurring in the alien cells. However, there was an unusual outlier with the human sample. In every other test, of infected Hylox cells had been destroyed as time progressed. Usually, as the infection progressed to the end stage within the cells. But in the human samples, portion of the Hylox cells had survived. Further examination had led them to discover that the human cells had forced the virus into a stage of latency or remission, leaving the Hylox cells untouched of signs of infection. This was the breakthrough. The mutations of the virus had resulted in difficulties in creating a vaccine. A quick clinical trial confirmed the initial results. Human blood injected into the host ceased the progression of the infection, a possible treatment in lieu of a vaccine. The team had gone further by attempting to isolate the elements that led to the Jinkor virus remission. Initially, they thought that it was a human immune system, but though the human immune cells were capable of destroying the virus, they did not spare the Hylox cells either. However, after some more trials, they isolated a hemoglobin with the target molecule. Hemoglobin, better known as red blood cells. At this point, Katri interrupted, her text proving a sharp break to the long string of the Acolyte's text. Wait, 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 wait. How do red blood cells cause a virus to go into remission? Red blood cells? The Acolyte's text queried back. Sorry, hemoglobin. What's the mechanism behind forcing the virus into remission? We are still trying to figure that out. But so far, our tests have shown that an injection of purified hemoglobin sends the virus into remission. But, uh... You must have a theory. The iron core, or maybe the oxygen affinity. We haven't yet been able to determine that. Fascinating, Katri said aloud. Seeing that Katri was becoming lost in thought, Suwong leaned forward to type out a question. So, what you are asking for is blood. As the alien acolyte froze, looking at his compatriots who looked uncomfortable, after a great length, the creator typed out, Yes! Su Wong leaned back. So, they want blood, she muttered under her breath. That would be a fun report to write later. Terence looked like he was about to have an aneurysm. Her own earpiece had gotten unusually silent as well. The ambassador looked at Katri, speaking directly to her. If we gave them permission to produce human blood, what could that entail? If I recall my high school biology correctly, blood cells are extremely simple. Blood cells come from stem cells. Giving them access would be incredibly controversial, regardless of the intent, Katri said, shutting that option down. Terence spoke up as well. We uh, also don't have any industries that produce blood in the quantities required. It's never been needed, but there are other options. The Mercy Fleet is still stockpiling supplies. We can ask them to pick up human blood, even filter out the white blood cells. So Wong nodded eyeing the aliens sitting across the table, who were visibly becoming distressed with the ongoing discussion. She tapped the message into the screen. We would be willing to assist. Terence immediately began tapping on his screen, undoubtedly communicating with the others in the other room to get to work. The aliens seemed to visibly relax, the aide appearing to quiver with emotion. The creator carefully typed the message. Your sacrifices will never be forgotten. Uh, what? So Wong frowned. Even for a high lux, that phrase was odd. It'll not be a big sacrifice. Humans get blood all the time. This seemed to startle the scientist alien, who interjected, Is blood not vital for you to live? How can extracting blood not be lethal? So Wong realized that the high lux had a poorer understanding of human biology than her. Blood is replaced continuously, and humans get blood all the time. After a second, she added, We don't give all the blood, just about half a liter at a time. It's a careful procedure, which ensures safety of the donor. This seemed to shock the aliens, and Katri suddenly recalled that they had no such medical practice. Humans were surprisingly lacking in diversity compared to other species. 
at a broad scale anyway. Even dogs had at least 13 major blood groups compared to the human's four. Even just looking at the three hylocks in front of her, she could see drastic size differences and unique head shape between each of them. If she recalled correctly, the acidity of Hilux blood could vary from 6 to 10, which would make the notion of standardizing blood transfusion quite absurd. The alien still seemed stunned. Why, would you take blood? This time, it was the aide who was asking. In case someone needs it, Su Wong said, somehow inserting a shrug into her line of text. Loss of blood, as you said previously, can be fatal to humans, which is why having a storage of blood on hand is beneficial to us. Katri interrupted, ignoring the aliens who suddenly grappled with the implications of what Su Wong had just described. I was doing some research on that. The nearest sizable blood bank is over two months away. Blood can only be kept in cold storage for maybe 50 to 60. There are smaller ones that are closer, but I'm talking really small. We should look into a fresher source. Getting rather vampiric, aren't we? Su Wong joked. Katri ignored her and continued. I would suggest we look into the Trident Warp Hub. Lots of humans funnel through there to get to this region. An impromptu bank could be opened there. Yeah, that, that's, that's a good idea, Su Wong affirmed. We could also pull some blood out of whatever troops that we have stationed in the sector, she thought to herself. The meeting closed with the cementing of the deal. Despite the high luck's somewhat awkward efforts, Su Wang declined their offer of compensation. The task of gathering blood would be left for the humans to manage, leaving the high luck's to prepare for the arrival of the Mercy Fleet. The high luck's delegate left feeling quite relieved, having evaded offending the humans and buying their people more time. And thus, the crisis was averted. When the call went out, people responded. Analysts estimated that the combat efficiency in some units dropped 10%, with soldiers competing to give more blood against doctor's orders. The Mercy Fleet rapidly distributing the aid across its affected zones. In some cases, the humanitarian workers gave blood on the field, directly infusing with the sickened Hylox when they encountered shortages. The blood shortages didn't last long. Catry's proposition was inspired brilliance. Nearly half a million humans went through the Trident Warp Hub daily. Every human who had arrived received a message from the diplomatic office, requesting their aid. Alien travelers were greeted with the usual sight of hundreds upon hundreds of humans giving blood, laid back on couches and benches with devices pumping them for blood. Like a macabre harvest. Appearances aside, as the result was fantastic. The tidal wave of deaths was stemmed by human blood. Regular donations of blood continued until the Hilux were able to create a permanent cure. It was an act of charity that the Hilux would long remember, paving a path for the induction of the Hilux into the Federation. End of story. I would just quickly like to thank the T5 channel members and patrons. Caspar Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Barky, It's Difficult to Pronounce, Lord Azrakul, and Arcadian. 